it's the most beautiful day. It's the most beautiful day and we're so excited to be here. This is so exciting. It is it the greenery has went out. Look, it's so green and beautiful. And it's sunny. And it's sunny not winter anymore. and warm we're wearing shirts. <laughs> shirts. And we're, oh, look, we're going down to the, the river's actually really low because it's been so dry recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as it looks like there's loads of four jobs, so we're really excited. We'll see you soon. Long time since we went mudlarking in this kind of weather. Wow. <laughs> Wearing gloves. Okay, so we decided to come to Berwick actually because there is never, I think we've only ever met one person down here on this stretch of foreshore in all the time we've been mudlocking here. Oh, look. First oh. find is a modern lock. That'd be handy though, that'd be handy for the hen house. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, we can use it for the hen house. Oh, is this a hagstone? Ah, look it is. It's not covered in um, look. mud like the town is in. Hagstone. No, it's not too bad for mud actually. There's a, a tooth, got lots and lots of teeth down here. Whoops, it's very slippy. Oh, first find of the day and it's one of my favourite finds as well. Look, it's a marble and there's a tooth there as well. Oh, rinse off in the water. There we go. It's a beautiful, modern, iridescent marble. Gorgeous colour, actually. There's something just poking out here. And it looks like a coin. Oh, look! It's an old pound coin. <laughs> it's an old pound coin. You can't spend them anymore, sadly. And that thing. I have actually, in all the excitement, left my trowel in the car. Oh well. It's nice not having muddy fingers actually. There it is. One pound. Okay, so just down there, in the water, I found this really old piece of pot handle or jug handle. It's really thick and chunky and it looks to me almost medieval, to be honest. It's not fully cooked in the middle and you can see these um, thumbing marks on it in the middle. Some kind of pattern on there but I can't see what colour the glaze is or anything, so I have to take that home and have a closer look at it. But down here, I found a bit of a square hand-forged copper nail that probably came off a boat. And I absolutely love copper nails, so I'm keeping that. And I'm just, oh, actually there, look. 
as well. Just trying to look close up at the ground for metal bits. There is a really, a really old nail actually, a copper nail or a pin. It actually looks like a nail that's kind of corroded over the years. Well, Mum's just found this old. It's a really bottle old lip. one. Yeah, that's quite an old one. 18th century, definitely. It's beautiful. Oh, I just found a coin. I don't think it's a very old one though. Oh, is that crab alive? Oh yes, oh. it is. It is. Poor thing. Sorry, you little yeah. guy. Wait. Cover him up. Yeah. There. He's shaded. He's shaded now. He's gone underneath it. <laughs> it looks like. It's a funny shape. Ten it's pence. Like oval. <laughs> Ten p. Oh. By the way, I just found this, and um, it looks like quite an old piece of clay, and it looks like it's had some kind of square hole punched into it when the clay was still soft. Could it be Roman? Could it be old? Let's take it. There are quite a few pieces of very old glass here, and it's got a most gorgeous iridescence. I don't know if you can see that. Isn't it pretty? I'm going to collect some of this up, I think. I like it. Can you guys see what I can see? Because I've lost it again. It's that hard to see. Can you see it? What? Just, can you see it? What was it? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Look how camouflaged it is! It's a coin, I could only get it. I could it only see like it when... Penny. I think it is, but I could only see it when it, it was in the light. <laughs> One P. River's made it all shiny. I think we found another metal spot here. You can see there's like hinges and big bits of nails and iron and things, washers. Loads of screws down here. I've got one copper nail. <laughs> I do like copper nails so they are nice. Just spot something down here. It's nice and green. Ooh. Look. A button. Oh no, oh. it's not a button, it's a washer. It's a washer. Oh, I thought it was a button. Oh, I think I see another one down here. Another coin. I think it's just a modern one. Another, yeah. It's another doopy. Another coin and some more random bits of metal. I think the coin's just a 1p. But the other things are brass and copper, so I'm going to keep those as well. Just spotted the first stopple bopper of the day. Down here, let's hope it's whole and it has something on it. It is whole. Is it? It's a stopple bopper. Yay! Clean it off. No, it has nothing on it, sadly. Hey! A marble! Oh, yes! I don't think it's a very old marble. Cut eye marble. Oh, there's such joy in finding marbles, though. It's probably not terribly old. Yes! <laughs> Okay, well we're going to the other side of the river now. much but yeah fingers crossed if we find nothing here hopefully yeah. we're going to the field of dreams if 
if it's not already been planted yeah. <laughs> that is keeping so, our fingers crossed yeah. for that too i'll see you in the first find anyway bye oh <laughs> well that is an old hammer <laughs> of course the obligatory shoe sole leather shoe sole what came out of this egg certainly some kind of seabird Reminds me of a big lapwing egg. I see a really nice piece. What looks like a nice piece of agate down here. I see the outline of some sort of metal thing here. I don't know if I can get it. No, it's stuck in there. Can you see that metal thing? <laughs> Could be anything. I can't get it out. There is loads down here today because the tide's gone up so far. There's all sorts, including beer glasses. We've got loads of Berwick beer glasses at home. Handle, two handles next to each other. Just stop, stotted? I've just stotted a stopple bopper. <laughs> oh look, it's a war grade one with the um, shallow taken out of it. And it says middle mass Kelso, uh, which we have found lots and lots of middle mass Kelsos. Uh, Kelso will connect bottle stoppers on this river actually. That's cool. It's so sunny and beautiful and I'm so happy to be out. That's quite pretty. If anyone ever finds one of these and wonders what it is, that is an old battery cell with plastic and carbon I think in the middle so I'm gonna take that with me and put it in the bin so I just found this <laughs> rusty metal dish and we were actually looking for something to make a bird bath out of I was wondering if I could take that home and do something with it <laughs> be a bit of a, a bit of a funky bird bath but I just saw something down here, it looks green. Oh, it looks like some kind of plaque. Oh, actually look, it is. Oh, look, it's got words on it. <gasps> look, I found a metal plaque. It has words on it. I haven't read it yet. Look. Oh. Can you see what that says? Might just, it's very delicate. Might just be off an old boiler or something. Still interesting though. Supply. Duty and supply. They're the only words I can see. Yeah, mm. oh electric supply. Oh. There's something to do with electricity. It's still got quite words old, on it though. It's quite old. Ooh, look at that neck. Look. Oh wow. Oh wow, look. That's a really old really one. Old one. Wow. That's the neck of a 18th century at least onion bottle how cool is that that's beautiful that's quite an, a like a quite a full one as well we don't usually find them with so yeah, much that's like one of the biggest ones we've yeah. found <gasps> whoa that's cool what a find i it like that, that what is, yeah. look i see a paste pot a good old a good old fashioned paste pot let's see if it's whole yeah it is i do collect these strangely even though they're extremely <laughs> extremely common find i really like them especially these little ones oh there's a bit of pipe 
And I bet you anything it says tenant on it. Yes, it does. And it says Berwick. Oh, it's very slimy and slippery. There's a bit, another bit of old bottle. And there. Ooh, and there's... Oh. Thought that might be whole. There are lots of... It's a broken up bottle here actually. Oh, that would have been nice. Oh wow, you know what? I bet that was whole. And it recently got washed out and broken up. Imagine finding a whole one. Mm. Oh, that would be... The surface okay. is all... Um, yeah, pitted. it's all really weird. Oh, I like that. Wow. That looks like a part of a vent brick. With a little hole then. There's loads of stuff here, but I don't, I'm feeling a bit rusty, to be honest. I'm probably missing loads. Shoe. There. Mum's washed it in the river. I can't go near the river because of this. <laughs> and my feet are quite soggy, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it's time for new wellies. Yeah, definitely time for those new wellies. After 20 years. After <laughs> Yeah, our wellies, they are literally like 20 odd years old. <laughs> Mine are even too big for me. They're not even my size. They're like a size too big. Run! Run! Not that you can run. Not that you can go anywhere quickly on this mud. We just see a jar over there that's kind of swamped and we're wondering if it's whole. Is it old? A hole? It's modern. Oh, okay. Never mind then. I have a feeling this might be one of the wheels off a mangle, but I'm not sure. It's kind of what it reminds me of. I just found this really unassuming piece of clay pipe. See, it's got a hole through it. But when you look at the ends closer, they're like worn down, like scratched on both ends. Like this piece of clay pipe is being used as chalk which is really interesting never seen that before and I've got two copper nails of course but yeah that's really odd and quite interesting maybe a child used that on their little blackboard are all the things we found all those months ago after the first lockdown yeah and we went rushing off to Berwick <laughs> and we found a lot more than I thought we had we only had one camera then um, so a lot of the things I found weren't filmed yeah but they're all here okay so this is all of our scrap metal it's all brass and copper and we always take scrap brass and copper because we can make things with it. We can melt it down, we can 
hammer it into something, saw it into something. Actually, you might have a pro project in the future yeah. of making things with our scrap. So that's cool. That'll go in our big old scrap pile. We've got modern coins. Um, they're all looking a bit knackered, especially this one, which is the most li the latest. Yeah, the sort of outer coin layer here. is peeling off. Yeah, so mudlocks of the future are not going to have much to no. find from our coinage, unfortunately. Such a shame. Um, and then we've got this beautiful little plaque down here, which says, "Electric light." Installation is the property of the electric supply company. And Mum's kind of sanded back the surface so you can see the, the writing kind of just glows there, which is really lovely. Um, so I don't know whether it's off um, a lamppost. Seems a bit small. But it's something very thin. early and electrical. Yeah, it's obviously off something electrical. It's quite difficult to date. <laughs> I would guess 1930s. Probably. But that's just, yeah, that's just, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, we've got, what else have we got? Nails. These are metal. Well, copper nails. they're nails, but this is a pin. It looks like a pin. Well, it is a pin. It's kind of square. Yeah, handmade pin, so pins are not just found on the Thames. Yes, yeah, We did find a bottle of... Uh, um, in Berwick, didn't we? It had a lot yeah, of Yeah, it had pins in, in the bottom. Yeah. So yeah, that's cool. Um, and that's a rivet, not a pin. I think a few of them are rivets. Um, this one I found on the video, um, but these... Are, oh, and oh, this and one. that one. And that one. <laughs> but these ones were in the bag. And so I probably found them. Yeah, <laughs> someone probably found them. There's a blue marble, which you probably found. And then a bead. I didn't realise we found a yeah. bead. Forgot about that. Well, it was a long time ago. It Excuse was. the moaning noise, that's our window. Yes, if you're wondering what that strange yeah. sound is in the background, it's windy. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a bit half, half, half a cob half marble. A cob marble. Yeah. Mod cobble. Mod cobble. Um, we got pretty glass. Yeah. <laughs> Tiny bit of red. And I think this is part of an old Victorian um, Christmas decoration. decoration. Yeah. yeah, like Christmas tree decoration. With little cups that, that they put the candles in. Yeah. yeah. And I, I'm pretty sure that that is actually part of one, which is yeah, cool. It looks like it. And yeah, some art glass. And that's probably off a... Um, a tail light of some sort. Yeah, yeah. Because um, we found loads of tail lights at Berwick yeah. for some reason. <laughs> um, and here is all of our old glass. Really old glass. Very old glass. So this is probably... Um, it could date anywhere from the mid-17th to the early 19th century. You can't really tell because they're just small shards but they've got some lovely some iridescence. iridescence on haven't they and these pieces that look blue yeah they look and when blue. you hold them up to the light they are they are actually green so yeah these are just we'll have to see if we can do something with them and they, my favorite things of all are uh, the lips of the, the bottles. lips and the collars of oh, bottles just look at that look how coarse it coarsely it's done i know just, it's so crude and i love it I just love these. I know, I love that. <coughs> just, they're so crude. I love that. I love that handmade look. Yeah. And this, our star that's, find. Yeah, that's beautiful. I absolutely look love look these old bottles. So this, is, I've been doing some reading on 18th century glass making. And this is probably off a onion bottle or a mallet shaped bottle. Um, it's It could date from anywhere from the mid to the early, well, actually, I don't think I'd put it in the 19th century. No, it's, no, it's definitely 18th century. Yeah, around mid-18th mid, mid 18th century. But look at that. It's like arid, iridescent. And then, I don't know, can you see the pit? It's, it's like being eaten away. Also, it's been freshly broken. Yeah, it's, well, well, freshly. Fresh. <laughs> but that is a lot fresher yeah, than the rest of like it. That is um, way sharper than... And some other yeah. fractures on there. It's beautiful. I love. I love them. <coughs> I love these. And yes, they're great. Gorgeous. Okay, so the history of this old onion bottle, mallet bottle, glass is actually um, really interesting. It was invented by a privateer with onion bottles, but that is a completely another story. Um, but I will say that the reason why the glass is so dark like this. It's because of the iron oxides in the sand used to make the glass. Um, and in the 18th century, 17th century, 
they started using coal to fire the kilns and the coal blackened the glass even further so that's why it's such a dark green color maybe that's why it's so difficult to make beads from it because of the something on the surface from the coal yeah, maybe, because we've tried making beads and we struggled a little bit. But we've got some examples up here. Ta-da! This is um, <clears throat> one of my old uh, onion bottles from my collection. You can see how wonky the top is. Yeah, this is beautiful. Look at that. It reminds me of one of these, actually. It's yeah, isn't that wonderful? Really quite crudely made. Well, the glass is pretty poor quality, actually, this dark glass. Got bits of... And it's got in. bubbles in it, and it was all free blowing. And there's you can see the pontal where I've come off the end of the blowpipe. Beautiful. And then we've got some later bottles up here. This is earlier than these two. And these are mallet shaped bottles. Yeah, you can see how the bottom is kind of like. Actually, this it's is lovely. Like later <laughs> mallet shaped it. bottles there are earlier ones which are wider. Yeah. In the body. Yeah. And they sort of transitioned from the... Yeah, it went from onion to, to mallet to these. And they sort of got narrower and narrower yeah. um, the later it got. That's quite and they deliberately kick pushed up the kick up so it would stand on the table flat. And so over here we've got some 20th century glass. We moved on quite a bit from uh, 18th century stuff down here. But this is a meat paste jar, a spreadable paste that you'd put on sandwiches. And this is the top of some kind of pot bottle. Um, because it says Middlemass Calzo, and at Middlemass they made aerated waters and fizzy pop and stuff. Um, over here we've got rocks, hagstone and some beautiful carnelian, which we find a lot of on the tweed. There's lots yeah. of agates and carnelian on the tweed. Um, pipe stems. We've got a selection of pipe stems, and I thought this one had been used like chalk because you can see how it's kind of like been the way it's been worn down on either end. This one's really cruddy. It won't come off either. Very crusty. And a tenants, quite a long piece. Yeah, tenants of Berwick or Newcastle which we find a lot of, actually. It's our most common pipe. Well, that's quite a big... <laughs> yeah, that's chunky. really chunky. It's very chunky. Um, we've got our potteries. Brilliant selection of pottery here. Yeah, that's very, this isn't pottery, it's a bone. It's a bone. <laughs> um, but the pottery that we found on that day um, varies greatly um, in age. Yeah. We've got quite, quite a cross-section of history going on here. So um, up here, this is a little piece of medieval. You can see the green glaze. Very difficult to say what. <laughs> Such a small piece. I know. This piece here is very crude. Um, so have a look at that. It's yeah, really and then this has got to be a, a medieval. It has to early. be. <laughs> that, that's very early, but yeah. I, I can't tell you what that is. Yeah, we're not experts. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is a piece of medieval. I love this. This is a great old piece of pot. And it's a piece of handle. And I think this might be what's called humberware. And that would date it from between the 1200s, the 13th century, to the 16th century. Um, and it's a hard-fired, iron-rich, usually red-bodied, and often with a reduced core. Now, the reduced core means it was low-fired um, with reduced oxygen, and that meant that the carbon wasn't all burnt out of the clay, and so it goes black or gray in the centre. Um, forms of this kind of humberware, pots and jugs, urinals, um, bunghole systems, <laughs> and several have been found encrusted with a white sort of deposit on the interior surface. And this was found to derive from urine. Mm, lovely. Um, and the glaze is usually olive green to brownish. And this is kind of that olive green. So green. this sort of fits all of that criteria. But you never know. So we're thinking medieval humberware. It has to be medieval. Yeah. It's just so medieval looking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, it's brilliant. Look. Oh, I'll do a close up. You can kind of even see where the, the finger marks have been. Look at that. Can you see that? Fantastic. Anyway, moving on. This tiny shard here could actually be Cistercian ware 
Or a it, piece of teapot. Or a piece of teapot. <laughs> but Cistercian ware was this sort of purplish red with the black glaze. Could be. This is just a part of a drain pipe. <laughs> yeah, drain. Don't know what this is. A piece of terracotta with a hole that's been prodded through it. Could it be a part of a tile? Could Some kind of tile? Could it be? Could it be? Could be anything. Don't yeah. know. If who anyone knows? knows. This is the rim of a pot of who knows what age. Oh. And this is a piece of Vestervold. Vestervold. And yes. that was imported from Germany and it was very popular stoneware. It's beautiful. You can see a wing there, can't you? Look at that. Yeah. There's a bird on there. It's such yeah, a shame yeah. its head's cold because that's lovely. And that was produced from the 15th century right through to the present day, but I think this might be uh, 18th century. Yeah, this is definitely an older piece, isn't it? Because yeah. it's just it's been in that river for a long time. Yeah. And I love this like cobalt blue decoration. Probably part of a stein or something. Yeah. Lovely. Um, this is <laughs> this is really modern. This is like 21st cent, 20 or 21st century. Yeah, say 20th. Um, the, this is these are more old bits. I mean, this is so old. This is bound to be medieval as well. Yeah, of some kind of drink, maybe some kind of German stoneware drinking vessel or something. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> um, transferware, which is um, modern, eighteenth to well now century. And yeah, I think that's everything. Have Except we? Except for this piece of bone. Oh yeah, it's quite bone. intriguing. It's, um, it's got these diagonal. Sort of yeah, marks, here marks and here. So I don't know what's been going on there. They're quite dented yeah. in. Yeah, I don't know what kind of animal that's off. It's very fibrous. Very fibrous. Is it human? Is it human? <laughs> Look at the structure in there. It's I quite... know. Bones are beautiful. So anyway, yeah, there's lots of bones on the tweed. But I think I think that's it. I think that's we've it. gone across everything. But now we're going to show you. Yeah, we, we've got a project planned. So last week we made our heads and while we were doing so, we were thinking up ideas of what we can make or what we can glaze or what we can make with some of our finds. And this might give you a clue. Yes, so clay pipes are unglazed bisque, biscuit pottery, earthenware. And so we, we have got loads of yeah. pipe stems and we're like, This is just one box. <laughs> just one. Just one oh, of the no, boxes. There's a bit of a wig colour. Oh, a bit of a wig colour, a cheeky bit of wig colour that's found its way in there. So a lot of these um, date, some of them date, some of these could be 400 years old, it's right through to the 20th century, so... Yeah, we've got a lot of material. Nice. Anyway, um, now we're going to show you our making yeah, we're something show you what we've, with uh, these bad lads. What we've done with some of these. So we really hope you enjoy that and we'll see you when we're finished.
Marshall is using. Hey, Barbie!
Here they are, the fruits of our labours. And I have to say, we had a great time decorating we these. We did, and we absolutely love them because they've actually worked. They worked, and they're <laughs> We brilliant. really let our imaginations go here. We did. This, there were so many ideas in such little time. Yeah, we really let our imaginations go and uh, came up with some funky ideas. Very funky, I have to say. Alex even started carving some of the bone bones, some of the bones, <laughs> some of the pipes, some of the pipes into bones. And they're my favourite. The, the first bones. one you did. I don't like the first one I did, but I, I absolutely do. love the bones. And so I did one as well. Alex did the rest of them. I did a memento mori one. Which I think they're a great idea. Just a friendly reminder. Took a bit of work, but you know your mortality. And on that theme, Alex did a little skeleton bead. Except this as broken when it went into the kiln, it yeah. was fired. I think the clay was It was a bit very dodgy. soft. It was very soft to start with, so. And it, there's a big crack running down the middle as well, so that's a reject, unfortunately. But you can do it again. I'll do another one. It is a bit of a disproportionate skeleton. <laughs> and you did this to the, the uh, sort Nobble, of knobbly. Knobbly pipe stem. And I think that looks amazing. Yeah, I did little flowers and it vines. feels lovely. It's so does. shiny. It's so they're so tactile. Yeah. Wish you could feel through the lens of the camera because the feel is just half of the joy of these things. This is a northern mudlarks one that northern I did. Northern mudmarks, as we call ourselves. I tried to do a vine, but we don't have green, and it was very difficult to mix a green with these. That's the problem. The colours are all very pathetic. Alex managed to get a better green on hers, but it was really difficult. We need to get some better painting colours, I think. Um, we did some pipes that actually... We filled in the... Um, the original stamp that was on the Yeah, wall. so you can see them. That says Ewe Castle. And this... Newcastle. That also says Ewe Castle. <laughs> And uh, Tennant. William Tennant's. And, and what else? We've got, um, oh, your little flower bead. I love this. I little quite like bead. how that turned out. It's simple, but just so effective, so pretty. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> and I carved some round beads as well, which took a lot of time. Oh, here's one of the, the ones we filled in the name on. Oh yeah, this is John Thompson. And this is a very old fragment because he made pipes between 1680 and 1720. So that uh, that J, it's John, it looks like an I, yeah. but back then the I's were written as, no wait, the J's were written as I's. Just to confuse people in the future. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so it's John Thompson. So that's a real piece of history, that. Newcastle, he, he operated out of Gateshead um, on Tyneside. So. Yeah. And I love that we've made that into, you know, something that can be cherished forever now. Um, 
Mum's got some beautiful willow pattern inspired pottery here. With apologies to the original designers because uh, it's very difficult. You don't realise how difficult something is until you try to replicate it yourself. Um, but um, the willow pattern wasn't actually a Chinese thing. It was inspired by Shinwazare paintings of the time, about 1780s or 90s it came in. And um, there's a story behind the actual picture itself on the plates. So there's a romantic fable that there was once a wealthy Mandarin who had a daughter and she fell in love with her father's humble accounting assistant. And this angered her father um, and he dismissed the man and built a high fence around the house to keep the lovers apart. The Mandarin was planning for his daughter to marry a powerful duke. The duke arri arrived by boat to claim his bride, bearing a box of jewels as a gift. The wedding was to take place on the day the blossom fell from the willow tree. On the eve of the daughter's wedding to the duke, the young accountant, disguised as a servant, slipped into the palace unnoticed. As the lovers escaped with the jewels, the alarm was raised. They ran over the bridge, chased by the mandarin, whip in hand. They eventually escaped on the duke's ship to the safety of a secluded island where they lived happily for years. But one day, the Duke learned of their refuge. Hungry for revenge, he sent soldiers who captured the lovers and put them to death. The gods, moved by their plight, transformed the lovers into a pair of doves. So there's the story of the willow pattern. Yeah. And what this jewellery... What jewellery? Well, it, it, it will be jewellery. <laughs> it's inspired by... Well, beads are jewellery. And these... They're supposed to be doves, but they are swallows. They're most definitely swallows, aren't they? Yeah, they look like swallows to me, because um, unless they've got three wings and one tail. They look like they've, they've got like the forked tail, and then yeah. the wings are very swallow-like. Yeah. But anyway. It's an interesting fable. It is. What else have we got down here? We've got some just some random funky patterns. Um, I did some fungus. Some little toadstools, um, a round bead with bottles. Uh, Mum did a bead with skulls on and a bone. And you did this one with little tiny buttons on. Mini buttons. I don't know how you got the buttonholes in some of those. They're <laughs> minuscule. <laughs> uh, that one's got... Oh, this is great. Look at the little clay pipes. It's got tiny little clay pipes on it. That's fantastic. It's even got shading on it. Yeah, and it took ages to do that little one. Alex is really good at the fine work. Um, and then we've got... We've got some <laughs> tartan inspired. Oh, yeah. This is Mum's. That's really pretty. I really like those colours. Goes with the willow pattern pieces. And, yeah, I think that's... Oh, and I, I did this one. Mum did a northern mudlarks one. I think I just showed that one. And then... I did what is the alternative to all this, and I put buttons and pipes and a domino and bottles. That's um, the, from the typeface. We yeah, found. a piece of typeface that we found that had that written on. Oh, this is inspired by Feather Edge. Mum did. Feather Edge pottery. Yes. And I, I did one with bees. <laughs> this is quite funny, actually, because I was like, Alex, what are these? They're bees, oh, no, but... you can't see the wings. You can't see the wings because they're white. The wings, <laughs> the wings didn't come out. They looked more whiter when I painted them, but, you know, they're just kind of blobs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's our beautiful beads. We were Did quite proud of them. Oh, yes, this has got little bottles on Look it. The little tiny bottles on there. All different shapes. Also, the glaze has cracked, but we like it. So it's yeah. got a crackle finish. It's got a crackle glaze on it. So Unintentional. <laughs> good, because they're good. I'm really happy with Crackles, them, and I look yeah. forward to doing some more. It's a shame this one broke. You can do another one. I'll do another one. Anyway, um, all that leaves to say is a great big thank you to everyone who contributes to our channel. And we really hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed making it. And we'll see you again next week. Bye! Bye.
almost forgot something. Shwoos. I have something for you, Shwoos. Okay, girls. What do you think? What do you think of the bee? This is why I put them on the string, because they take off with them when you shoes. <laughs> there we go. They, our beads got the peck of a shovel. If they weren't on a string, they'd be eaten. <laughs> Isn't that right, you naughty shrew? Could wear it as a necklace.